fall term for KHS. So we have our research seminar uh, once a month. So we'll have another one in October and November, so I encourage you to come to other ones. Our first one today is going to be delivered by Dr. Patrick Neary, who's a professor in the Faculty of PCLG and Health Studies. Just to give you a sense of what's going to happen, he will present for about 40 to 15 minutes. We'll leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. Uh, if we do questions, I'll walk around with the microphone just so that people can hear. Unfortunately, individuals that are joining us by live streams through YouTube cannot ask questions. We don't have that capability, but we have a large audience in here, so hopefully we can have some questions at the end of this. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Patrick Neary. Please welcome him for our first uh, seminar of the fall term. Great. Thank you, Lorena. Thanks very much. Can everybody hear me back there? Great. Thank you, Sean. Um, it's my pleasure, and I'm sure glad that you all showed up today. We're going to talk about uh, cannabis and pot and concussions, and we'll see where that's going to lead us. Um, the first thing I'd like to do, and I do have an acknowledgement on the next slide, but I really, any research that we do at these institutions cannot be done alone. We, we don't want to work in silos, we're trying to work together collaboratively. And so we've got a whole big team here that we've been able to build over the last approximately a year. Colleagues from the University of Saskatchewan, Jane Elkhorn, Robert LaPrairie, um, uh, Michael Saffron, Elizabeth Thompson, who's a, a PhD student, and I'll talk a, a little bit more about Elizabeth in a moment. Uh, colleagues from the university here as well, Thomas uh, H, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, Cameron Mang, who's here in the audience, and so is Holly Barditz. Uh, Lanishan Bagaloo is a physician in town. Um, Pyam Degani is a cardiologist. Bruce Bjornsson is a pediatric neurologist. And then um, we have Zach Walsh and Phil Ainsley are from the University of British Columbia in Kelowna and a physiologist and a clinical psychologist and again Kim Dorsch is our sports psychologist here. So it create, it, we, we need a big team in order to do any type of research and so this used to work. So in order to uh, okay, move forward here Okay, let's try this method. My apologies. This did work. Let's try that. I can't find the cursor here. If you look on the screen, What's that? you should be able to find the cursor right here. So just look over here. So where's the presentation? Okay. So, so no, the presentation is here on my laptop. Oh, okay, gotcha. Do you have a USB you can transfer? I don't. I don't. Let me grab a USB for Okay. My apologies, everyone. Before, before we got started, I checked this and it did work. And as would have it, technology in the 21st century uh, has eluded us. Okay, let me try something here, Joe, just before you do. Oh, I want that. Perfect. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. So I've introduced our team and we're gonna move forward and we'll talk about uh, how this all came about. Well, I have a graduate student, as I mentioned, uh, in the University of Saskatchewan, and Elizabeth Thompson. And one day she was watering her pot plants and across the screen came this, the, the NFL has decided that they want to offer a million dollars in order to conduct 
pain management research and concussion or, or cannabis products. So I thought, Elizabeth, what a great idea. Let's look at this. And um, we put together an application with all of the individuals that I talked about earlier. There were 106 applications globally. Um, we, were ten, we were shortlisted to 10. We had to do a presentation on the information that I'm gonna provide for you today. And then they decided that they're only going to fund two applications and we were fortunate to get one of those applications and another group from Southern California got the other amount of money. So although it's not a lot of money, a million dollars sounds like a lot, but in order to do the type of research that we're wanting to embark on, it really isn't. However, we believe that what we can do with the money given is going to be able to provide some foundation, some starting points in which to look at this whole idea of cannabis. Can we use medical cannabis to mitigate concussion or can we use it to offset pain and pain management? Can we use it uh, in that way? And again, I've introduced my colleagues. I'd really like to thank all of my graduate students who have been involved in this seminal research um, that we've done here at the university, our funding agencies, and of course I've introduced uh, Elizabeth who, who really put the bug in my ear to let's take a look at this, and then of course Dr. Singh who, uh, who's also been instrumental in our lab in getting this whole project and, and ideas moved forward. The background, I'll provide some background on concussion. I'm going to talk about this proposed NFL project. And can we use cannabinoids as an alternative to prescription medications? What we're hypothesizing out of this research? What's the methodology that we're going to use? As well as the type of equipment that many of you kinesiology students in here will probably have been using or have used or have seen in our labs. And then I'm gonna open it up for questions. About 10 or 12 years ago, Sports Illustrated came out with this um, magazine talking about the hits that are changing the game. And you're all very, very familiar and aware that any contact sports could potentially lead to a concussion. And the two individuals at the bottom here, and how many of you saw the, the movie Concussion? Okay, a number of you have, all right. If you haven't, and I know there's some Hollywood to it, it really does portray an appropriate and true story of actually what has happened to the one gentleman on the far side, uh, Mike Webster, who unfortunately took his life because of the pain and uh, the difficulties that he went through with concussion. Same with Aaron Fernandez. All right, died with millions of dollars in his bank account but took his life because he couldn't deal with it any longer. We also know Sidney Crosby went through this. And of course, rugby is another example. We often don't think of bobsled and luge and those type of uh, winter sports, but they too can create these concussions. And how can we help individuals who love contact sports? And I, I'll admit that Sunday morning, I'm sitting in front of the television watching the NFL. All right, and I'm sure there's a few others as well. I know there's people in here like to watch boxing. What a barbaric sport, all right? But what can we do to help these individuals and even people on the playgrounds that have difficulties in the future? First, to define concussion. It's a, a complex patho, uh, ph pathophysiological process that is induced by biomechanical forces applied to the head, really, or to the body itself. And one of the things, if you watch this video, is just hitting the front of the head or the back of the head will move the brain inside the skull. And that's what a concussion is. And the other thing to know about this as well is you don't really need to hit your head. A whiplash can give you that type of a movement. All right, so there's this idea that in order to get a concussion you need to hit your head, which isn't true. All right, and you can see here that even a whiplash could potentially do that as well. 
So this then led us to, all right, is there something that we can do? And there's a vast amount of research out there that I was completely unknown. And, and I had no idea that it was actually being conducted to take a look at, you know, what's going on in our bodies when we smoke pot. All right, so then of course you can see here after a few joints, um, Joe and I decided to get together. We ate a couple of bags of chips, all right, and we came up with this idea. All right, what can we do in order to help these individuals who may not be athletes and see whether or not we can actually help them mitigate their, their symptoms and the suffering that they're actually going through? And can we use CBD? All right, how many in here use CBD? All right, good for you. How many in here use THC in one form or another? Good for you, all right? So it's important that we take a look at this. And then of course, Joe is very instrumental in moving again our laboratory forward in the type of research that we've applied to do through the NFL. And then this summer I was fortunate to be in Galway and uh, presented some of the research that, uh, that Joe took on in the lab. And I'm happy to talk about that later. So this now brings us to what we call our endocannabinoid system. And believe it or not, all of you in here, within your bodies, you have a cannabis-like system. And the function of that cannabis-like system is homeostasis, or balance. And that's what we're trying to do with any of these phytocannabinoids, the CBD or the THC that you may take in with your tinctures, all right, or vapes, or, or however you're getting the CBD or the THC in, uh, potentially even ingesting it. It's going to create this complex, and, and I'm not even going to be, begin to even try and explain this endocannabinoid system. But it's a system we have in our body, in all different parts and system, uh, systems, from our brain to our muscles to our liver, all right, in our kidneys, our blood vessels, all right, our blood cells, have this endocannabinoid system. And we can activate that system and we can then try and create this balance if you are in an imbalance. So if you've got anxiety or you're depressed, all right, or, or potentially um, after your resistance training, you've got a lot of inflammation from doing your weights. Can we use this CBD, THC, to stimulate this system in order to create this change? And again, I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but there's research to suggest that, that CBD or cannabidiol, it's called, all right, can help to decrease any neuron, uh, neuronal damage or death. And then, of course, there's information out also to show that a lot of these athletes later on in life, maybe not even later on in life, just in order to survive from one game to the next, all right, they're taking these opioids. But can we actually give you the CBD and the THC to figure out whether or not we can offset and eliminate that use of prescription medications? So then we undertook this study and we had two major, major areas that we wanted to look at. One, of course, was the opiates and pain management. And the other, of course, is whether or not CBD is really, truly neuroprotective. Can we protect your neurons? All right, by taking CBD so that you can go into contact sport and potentially alleviate or avoid any of those problems. So then what we've been able to look at in the literature is to suggest that, you know, there are really no good pain management research on elite contact sport athletes to show that we can actually alleviate that pain. So that's a major part of this study as well. The other part, again, is based on some of our research that I just illustrated, you know, with Joe in the lab there, some of the research that we've published already, to take a look to see whether or not can we actually use the CBD and THC in a prospective manner? Can we give it to you and help mitigate these problems that individuals and athletes actually have? So we can use the CBD or the cannabidiol, the THC, the tetrahydrocannabinol, and then see whether or not we can assess and help these individuals out. 
And again, we had basically three purposes. One again was the pain management. The second was really to take a look at the relationships between the different systems within our bodies and use it in a very integrative physiological and psychological manner. So for example, we're going to look at the relationships between your perception cognitive. Dr. Dorsch is going to look at that. The, the psychology, Thomas H. in, in the uh, psych department is going to look at that. We're going to look at the physiological, uh, neurophysiological. Dr. Cameron Mang and his group are going to look at that. Sleep, Holly Bartis is going to look at that, as well as what are the health outcomes. And then finally, we're also going to do something that we call looking at how the the body responds to the amount of CBD that you take into it. And we're going to look at the blood and we're going to look at what we call the pharmacokinetics of that. What is the kinetic analysis that we can actually do? How much can you actually take and it can be safe for you to do that? All right. And then of course we've hypothesized that this is all going to be good for us. All right, in one way, shape, or form, and that we're going to be able to look at these different areas to say that, yes, we can get athletes off of prescription medication, in particular the opioids. Yes, we are going to find a relationship between the different clinical and outcome measures that we're going to look at, and I'll go through these in more detail in a moment. And then we are going to find a relationship with that pharmacokinetic data, and can we actually use that to individualize our programs? Can we put you on an individual program versus you, versus you, versus any of you in here? Can we actually take that data and say, this is going to be the best formulation for you? So those are other things that we're going to look at as well. And so how are, we, how are we going to do this? Well, what we've done is we've come up with five outcome measures. The first is clinical. Are there less uh, visits to the doctor with our athletes? And hospitalization. What's the quantity and quality of their sleep? All right, what are the number of concussions? So we're going to record all of that. We're also going to look at the, the neurophysiological uh, and physiological data. And we're going to look at the blood analysis. We're actually going to look at saliva analysis. We're going to look at different blood markers. We're going to look at your platelets as well. Are there problems associated with your blood vessels? And can the CBD help with that? when you've got a concussion. We'll look at cerebral oxygenation, we'll look at blood pressure, we'll look at uh, how, how the brain and the heart are related and interact through this uh, type of research we're doing. We're also going to look at um, the, what, what uh, Dr. Cameron Mang and his colleagues call a uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, where we're going to use a coil, and I'll show some pictures in a moment, and how we can use this magnetic coil to stimulate your neurons. And then we're going to take a look and see what's going to happen before and after we give you CBD, or pre and post concussion as well. And there's been a research done in that area in particular. We're going to look at this perceptual cognitive uh, approach to it as well, where we're going to use something called a neurotracker, and I'll show you pictures of that in a moment, and something called the DynaVision. Um, we're going to look at the biopsychosocial model and a number of different types of questionnaires. Questionnaire data is really important. That quantitative, qualitative information that we can get out of all of this information that we're going to be collecting. And then finally, we're going to also look at functional performance measures in the lab as well. So we've got a lot of outcome measures here, and as you can see, we've got a huge team. We've got about 15 or 16 people on this team in order to take little bits of all of this so that we can add it together to say what is actually happening when we have cannabis in our system. I'll go through this very quickly. There's three major studies that we're going to look at. The very first one is here. And for the next three slides, what I've done is I've put all of our different um, outcome measures that we're going to be collecting in this box. Number one is the clinical, two is the physiology and the pharmacology, the three is the perceptual cognitive, number four is the biopsychosocial and emotional constructs, and then the functional skill performance. And then you can see that timeline above. 
where it's got these little numbers and that's what those numbers refer to. So number one refers to the clinical outcome, two to the physiology and the pharmacology, etc. And so what we're going to do is for the first 15 days from minus 15 to zero before the program even gets started, we're going to make sure there's a washout. I want to make sure that you haven't been smoking pot before you come in and do my project. All right? Or any of you have not been taking your CBD, all right? Because we want to start right from baseline. So we're going to do a washout period. And then with this very first study, it's what we call a dose escalation study, where we're going to dose you up all the way through this program. And from day zero to day 15, we're going to give you a placebo. So. I don't know if there's any of my students in here. I can see a few of them. My favorite word is what? Joe? Uh, dick all. Right? So dick all is going to happen here between day, day 0 and day 15 because we're not giving you anything. That's the, the, and that's what we want to show. We want to show that there's not going to be any changes during that first 15 days. And then thereafter, what we're going to do is we're going to put you on five milligrams per, per kilogram of body mass to see how your body responds to that CBD. All right, so f just as an example, if you weigh 100 kgs, right? And a lot of these football players are 100 kgs. They'll be taking 500 milligrams a day, and then we're going to bump them up to 1,000 milligrams, and then up to 1,500, 2,000, all the way up to 3,000 milligrams. So we're going to dose them all up. Every two weeks, we're going to take one of these measurements, or all of these different measurements, and we want to see how the brain is responding to the CBD. How are you, how's your blood responding to it? All right, what, what's happening to the, the cognition as well that we're going to look at is, uh, uh, through these different projects. So that's the very, very first project. And the whole idea of this first project is can we determine an optimal formulation for CBD for these athletes? Then what we're going to do is we're going to move to the next study. We're going to take that optimal formulation and it may be different for each individual. And we're going to then take that to see whether or not we can then put that into a season of football. And the way the football season, again, is designed is that for about a month, there's four games, and then there's a, a, a break where, you, where there's a bye week, and then you come back and you do it again for another four weeks. So with this process, again, we've got all of these different outcome measures we're going to look at. We have our timeline there. That first 15 days before the training camp starts, again, we're going to make sure that you're not consuming any cannabis products. And then when the baseline starts right up till the, the preseason, we're going to put you on a placebo again. And then it's the day of that football season, what we're going to do is one group is actually going to take CBD, all right, and for a month, and then they'll switch over and do a placebo. And the other half of this group is going to start with a placebo, and then they're going to take CBD. So we have what we call a crossover design. And then that way, a very, very good design, all of these athletes are going to get everything. They're going to get the CBD, and they're going to get the placebo. So we'll be able to tell whether or not the CBD had an effect on our outcome measures. The psychology, the physiology, the blood biochemistry, the saliva. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what we call pain management. Some of the initial slides I mentioned is that some of these athletes are taking their lives because they're on opiates. So can we actually use any of these different products to try and help them get off of these prescription medications? And so the, the very last study here is what we call a randomized Latin square double blind design. And what that really means is that we have five interventions here. And all of the athletes, ex-athletes as well, all right, people who have post-concussion syndrome, who have huge pain management problems, all right, they're going to go through all five of those. But they won't know which one they're on. We won't know which one they're on. And it's all going to be randomized. So any of you could be starting with the CBD and THC. 
and then you would be moved to the nutraceutical and CBD. Then the next thing you'd get is the CBD and THC. And then after that you might get the placebo. But you'll go through all of these over this timeline. And again, as you can see, there's a, a 15 day washout period between each of these different interventions. So again, a really good design in that everybody in this room is going to go through all of those five interventions and we're going to monitor your brain and your blood, all right? We're going to do questionnaire data and all of these, these outcomes that we've been talking about. And we're going to see what we feel, what we find may potentially be the best for you. And some of you are going to respond better to, to some, th some of these interventions than other interventions. So then what's the methodology for all of these studies? All right, and the, the, you know, one, of, one of the downsides of doing this type of research and trying to collect all of this information is that the tests take a long time. So unfortunately you'd have to come in for about two hours for us to put you through the paces. All right, and we're going to get you to do the blood, the saliva, we'll do the demographics, we'll do the physiology, the transcranial magnetic stimulation, uh, the perceptual cognitive uh, questionnaires, all right, and that motor skill that we described, all right. We're going to look at what these combinations of, it, of uh, CBD, THC administration is. They're going to be done twice a day in the morning and the evening, and our idea is to try and put, uh, add this. Um, CBD and THC with some sort of a dietary supplement as well I, because we know that a high fat, in particular a high fat diet, really helps to get the CBD and the THC into the system and create an increase in what we call the bioavailability. How much can we actually have available for our body? All right. So that's the idea is to try and add uh, uh, some sort of a, um, uh, a supplement so that we can add it to it so that we can get even more, a bigger bang for our buck in, in other words. And then of course we're going to do dietary records and, and we'll also make sure that nobody is having adverse events or uh, adverse effects to this as well. The, our physiology lab, you can see that this individual all right, it's got a lot of stuff put on them. All right, so we're going to measure cerebral oxygenation. We're going to measure cerebral blood flow. We're going to measure respiratory measures. We're going to look at cardiac. All right, we're going to put a little device on the on the sternum. All right, and we're going to collect what's going on with the heart because the heart is really affected during a concussion. We're then also going to take a look at um, blood pressure. There's a blood pressure monitor and cuff there. So we've got a whole bunch of physiological measures that we want to do. This um, is just to illustrate that, that uh, we have the science in order to look at how our arteries within our brain, the pile arteries, are actually oscillating. And that oscillation, how is it affected by your CBD and your THC that you're using? And is that a good thing or a bad thing? And of course we've, we've uh, published in all of this so we know what we're doing, at least we think we know what we're doing. So we can take a look at these different uh, uh, variables, the blood pressure, uh, what's going on with blood pressure, and how is it changing when, we ha when you're on CBD or you're not on CBD? And is that beneficial? And then uh, again we're going to use something called near infrared spectroscopy and it measures the oxygenation levels in your brain. Amazing. We can shine light into your brain and we can figure out how much oxygen you're using. So we have that as well. And, and we're going to look at different imaging. We can do functional imaging of uh, this information. And so we can create pictures of where things are happening in your brain when you're on the CBD or you're not on the CBD or on the THC or a combination of those nutraceuticals. Um, uh, thank you very much to Dr. M uh, Cameron Mang, who's in the audience here, who provided this picture. And Cameron and his group are going to look at, again, using a, a transcranial magnetic stimulator. We're going to stimulate the brain using uh, a magnetic coil. And we want to then take a look at what, how the system is responding when you're on these cannabinoids. And can, that, can we use that as a corrective measure? 
not only diagnosis to find out whether we can diagnose whether you've got a concussion or the problems associated with concussion, but can we help to treat, can we help to manage based on some of this information. We're also, as I mentioned earlier, working with uh, colleagues at BC Children's Hospital, <clears throat> excuse me, in Vancouver. And again, we're going to take nice fancy pictures of your brain before and after you're on CBD. Um, we've got uh, excellent uh, uh, pharmacology uh, for the analysis of blood. We've got uh, uh, individuals here at this university as well that we're going to be, and in our faculty as well, that we're also going to be looking at some of this information. So we're going to analyze all the blood in the saliva, all right, to see what we're doing. Speaking of saliva, um, what we're going to do is we're going to get these athletes, all right, to spit in a tube collect about two mils, and then we're going to analyze it for their genes. And in particular, what we're going to do is we want to look at the, the metabolic enzymes. As you know in your body, in your muscles in particular, when you are exercising, you have to produce energy. And you have enzymes to help you produce that energy. And some of these different pathways, we can actually detect through your saliva when we analyze the DNA within your saliva. And so what we want to do with this, and this is a, a company out of Toronto actually, it's called My Next Health, all right, they're going to analyze all the saliva samples for us, and we're going to do something called, we're going to look at the, the epigenetics. How does your diet affect your genes? How does your training and your nutrition and now can we actually predict how the athletes will actually respond to the cannabinoids? So if we create this optimal formulation, all right, do we know whether or not our athletes that are part of this program are going to be able to respond to the cannabinoids that we're giving them? So how do you guys respond to that? Right? How, does you, how do your genes actually respond to that? So part of this is we're going to look specifically at that, the different receptors and the enzymes that we have within our, our body. All right? And then can we use and predict who might get a concussion? Can I, can I predict who's, who in here is actually going to get a concussion? based on your genetic analysis of your simple saliva. So we're going to look at that and then can we predict a therapy for that, as I mentioned earlier. As far as our, our clinical outputs and looking at uh, some of the, the biopsychosocial, biopsychological uh, information, the researchers on our team have, have published significantly in this area of pain, pain management. Our colleagues in, in clinical psychology, all right, as well as our colleagues at the University of British Columbia in the Okanagan, all right, Zach Walsh uh, and group have actually looked at some of these in individuals or people actually on the streets as well, and they've looked at substituting cannabis for prescription drugs. So we're going to follow that along to see whether or not our program in that study three is actually going to be beneficial. And which one of those interventions could be potentially the best? And if not potentially the best, are there interventions, combinations of interventions that we're going to use that can actually help to alleviate the pain and get these individuals off prescription medications? Dr. Dorsch and her group is going to look at the perceptual cognitive uh, information. Some of you in here may have gone through, you know, what we call the neuro tracker, all right? What you try and do is you, you look at these uh, different balls, you track them, all right? And then they're going to disappear and then they'll come back. And then you have to figure out how they disappeared and how they came back and in what order was it. All right, so you're really stimulating your brain. And of course, when you have a concussion, that becomes more difficult to do. And then again, we can take a look at the results and see how you're responding from your baseline to your concussion to your return to play. But then now what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle CBD over top of this. And does that help? All right? Does that help to stimulate this whole cognitive function that we have in our brains and our ability to, to think out patterns and follow patterns? Because these are all disturbed in concussion. 
And then of course, the finally we've got what we call this DynaVision 2, and, and on that board there, these lights come off at different times. And so you have to respond to that, so it's a basically reaction time. Can you respond quickly enough to where those lights are coming, all right, to put them out? And how long does it take to do that? And with our programs, are we shortening up that reaction time? And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to also look at some uh, motor control. We're whoops, sorry about that. We're going to uh, get you to do a vertical jump as an example. All right, because you know it's the brain that's going to drive the muscle, all right? And if the brain isn't functioning properly, well, you can't drive the muscle in order to do that jump. So we're going to take a look at that as well, with and without CBD and with and without THC, to see what's the 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 uh, what the actual CBD or the THC actually has, what the effect is when we uh, when we look at these functional motor. All right, and then I, I don't me necessarily mean to say finally, all right, but we are collecting sleep data as well off of a watch, the ActiGraph. Dr. Holly Bartitz is going to do this, and she's going to take a look to see what's the importance of sleep, because we know it's really important. Sleep is so important, all right, when you have a concussion. And that old, that old uh, uh, adage, that old idea that you need to wake somebody up every two hours, you don't need to do that anymore. Let them sleep, all right? It's really, really important. And, and any of my students in here know, and uh, those who have worked uh, with me in the lab, I'm really anal about data collection. Because if you're not collecting that data properly, all right, then you don't know what you've got coming out of it. So I don't allow any baseline testing in our lab before 10 o'clock in the morning. All right, Sean, you want to come in for your concussion test um, at 6 o'clock in the morning? Sure. Oh, yeah. No, wrong answer. <laughs> no, you don't want to come in at 6 o'clock in the morning. Just because you did your baseline, because that's, yeah, I like to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and get my test over with. No, all right, because when you have a concussion, we don't want to be pulling you out of bed at 6 in the morning. So those type of things are really, really important as well. And of course, the sleep becomes extremely important in this whole mixture. And then finally, when you put this whole thing together, all right, and we uh, uh, actually, Joe Paul Singh did most of this, all right, I got to travel to Galway to present it. And, uh, and again, it really just try and illustrate everything that we're doing in this whole uh, project uh, in one slide. All right. That's about all I have to say. I want to finish with this slide. Got to protect your melon. All right. And again, I really want to thank this brain injured team that we're going to be working with. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Can you get one slide back, please? Pardon me? Can you go one slide back? Sure. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Neary? Got time for questions? I'll ask you a question, Patrick. Sure. So I know the population that you're looking at, um, or actually the adults, who is your population? Oh, excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with uh, university male athletes and, and for this first study that we're doing with the NFL, because there aren't any females playing in the NFL yet, all right, uh, we're restricted to collecting data on, on male athletes. So we're going to be using uh, university athletes through uh, um, their uh, training programs, so any of the ice hockey players, the contact sports, any of the rugby teams that we do have in this area, uh, football of course, um, you know I know we used to have wrestling as well, but we're going to use contact sport athletes going through their, their uh, training programs for the very first one. And then for the second study, we're actually going to be using the football teams, uh, the Rams, we're going to be using the Huskies up at the U of S, we're going to be using the Suns in Kelowna, and then UBC Thunderbirds as well. All right, because they're part of this whole project. Great, thank you for that. So just to follow up to that, um, because women 
or uh, part of it, part of the NFL. Do you have some idea about how this could generalize maybe to women who are involved mm. in contact sports? Or is there some research on that about how this may impact them in the same way or different way? Yeah, there, there is some, there's only a small amount of research that has looked at females versus males because the majority of the research done in this whole area of cannabinoids has mostly been using what we the, the, the mouse and the rat model. All right, so we're starting to move those barriers. All right, we do know that, that females do respond differently to cannabinoids. And again, it's related to the different types of genes that we have, you know, the estrogen and progesterone versus the testosterone. All right, uh, serotonin levels also come into that as well. But, you know, excellent. And, you know, once we get this study started and, and hopefully completed, the next idea is then we're going to look at female athletes as well, ice hockey. Uh, uh, you know, women's soccer as well, volleyball, um, although there are less concussions in volleyball, but it still does happen. Yeah, great, thank you. Other questions? You know, you're going to have to ask uh, Dr. Mang that question. Hey, uh, um, this is Cam. Um, so the, the TMS, if we won't be looking at it in a, a priming context of like trying to alter corticose spinal stimulation with it in the study, it will just be like an assessment of corticose spinal stimulation at, at each point in time. Yeah, so excellent question. So, so Cam has asked, are we going to be looking at other healthcare providers besides hospital, hospital visit, doctor visit, phys physical therapy as an example, um, potentially um, chiropractics, uh, um, etc. And yes, we will. And one of the things that we're going to do is um, be looking to go towards hospital records as well. Uh, the different teams that uh, are going to be working with us, the uh, university teams, they have their own athletic trainers as well and physios. All right, So we're going to be working closely with them in order to see who actually has concussions, who doesn't. All right, And so when we get into the, for the very first study, we're not because it's going to be done in the off season. And the whole idea of the first study is simply just to see whether or not there's an optimal formulation that we can actually use to go into that second study where and that's the football season that we're going to be looking at yeah thanks Patrick um, can I ask one more yeah, question okay. sure. the optimal, trying to figure out the optimal for, uh, formulation is there a is there like one measure above the rest that you'll consider or are you going to be trying to factor in all of these different yeah, we're going to try and put that all together and we know that there's a, a, a lot of information here and a lot of data here that we're going to be collecting and the, the, this optimal formulation is basically going to be um, looked at from the pharmacokinetic data. So when you're taking 5 milligrams per milligram of uh, a body mass, where, where does that point sit on the curve? And then is the next point a little bit higher? Uh, is the third point higher again? And then does it start to come down from there? And so, so that's the whole idea of the pharmacokinetics. And, and when we take in different amounts of CBD or THC, the body's going to respond in that type of a manner where we'll be able to show how much is actually in the blood. What it isn't in the blood has actually been used by the body. So we'll be able to do 
record what that bioavailability is and can we map out, all right? So for example, Cameron, you might be best at 1,000 milligrams a day, all right? Somebody else in here, Sean, you might be good at 1,500 milligrams a day. So we're gonna have to take not only individual data and, and some of the, the uh, analyses techniques that we showed earlier using something called a wavelet transform, looking at the changes over time, the physiological data over time, will help us to try and figure out what could potentially be optimal formulations for athletes who are undergoing this type of training. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, congrats again. Thanks, Patrick. Um, you're talking about athletes still in training, competing, not just injured, out retired athletes. So is cannabis... The third study is. Yeah, the okay. third study is going to look at injured, retired athletes who... My question is, the cannabis THC, is that not a banned substance? Uh, it, well, it, the, the CBD is not. All right, and, and the third study uh, is going to have the THC in it. Studies one and two are not going to have it. All right? THC is a banned substance. It is a banned substance. How do you get around that when you're working with athletes that are still training, competing? We have to go through Health Canada. Health Canada is going to be able to provide us with uh, the okay to give them uh, standardized amounts, and a standardized amount is actually five milligrams of THC, <laughs> which is, which isn't a lot. Would that fail like a lot of drug tests? No, and so what we're going to do, and of course, it's taken twice a day. So you get two and a half milligrams in the morning, two and a half milligrams in the evening. All right, you most likely would still be able to drive after a couple of hours, but of course, that's another complexity that we have to deal with. All clear, or they have permission to not be all clear. What's the question? If they got drug tested as an athlete, would they be the, all clear? Would it would be detectable, or they would have permission yeah. to not be all clear to have that in their system. Yeah, we're not worried about that because that group that's going to be taking the THC are not going to be competing athletes. Okay. They're going to be the retired, post-concussion people who are suffering on the streets who have got all this pain. Okay. So in the first two studies, there's not going to be any THC. All right. So we don't have to worry about the legality of giving them a banned substance that WADA and the university are uh, putting on us. All right. Which I think is a I think it's a mistake because the research shows that if you've got CBD in a high concentration, THC in a low concentration, it the, the high CBD takes out any of that psychoactive effect. We are we are light years behind in what we, I hate to use the word should, should be doing, all right, and what we should be giving athletes. And, but we need to be able to illustrate and show that, and that's where the research is at. So thanks for that question, and I'm, I'm hoping that that clarified that uh, we're not worried about the THC because these are individuals who are suffering and, and uh, we want to get them off of, of pain uh, medications. Yeah. Excellent question. So the question is, can we monitor long-term damage to the brain, basically? And I, it, it's so interesting you state that because we've just published some papers on looking at the long-term effects of three or more concussions on the brain. And again, because I'm a physiologist, we're looking at the physiological measures. We're looking at, at uh, the oxygenation levels. We're looking at blood pressure. We're looking at heart, heart rate, cardiac mechanics. And we've been able to show that three or more concussions over the span of your lifetime, all right, can have you uh, you're significantly different in how your brain is responding to certain maneuvers that we're going to be doing. 
versus those who didn't play any contact sports. And if I can use the example, one of the things that we do in our lab is we do a squat stand. So you squat for 10 seconds and you stand for 10 seconds. You squat for 10 and you stand for 10. And we do that for five minutes. And we look at the blood pressure response, we look at the oxygenation levels, and we've been able to show with that test in particular that there are differences between those who have got three or more concussions over their history versus those that have none or very few, right? So, so we think that's really important to be able to show. Now we can let the society know that, you know, you have to be very, very careful with your brain because, you know, I've had five concussions myself and look at me, I'm normal. <laughs> well, some would, some would really debate that, all right? So, so later on in life, in 10 years, am I gonna have really problems with, uh, with word retrieval? Am I gonna have those kind of difficulties? So maybe what we need to do is put them on CBD and THC and or THC, maybe at an earlier time, right? Maybe we can mitigate some of those problems or the effects. Excellent question, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. We've got time for a couple more questions. If anyone else would like to ask something. 